Also nicke mit dem Beat und beweg den Arsch, wenn das gleich genau Mic ist. Bon voyage. So, what it happened? Welcome to another episode for the Funky Pod. There was a German hip hop song called Bon Voyage by Deichkind, which used to be one of my favorite hip hop groups back then when I was young. Um, so, if you're a German speaker or if you just like the beat that I just dropped, because I mean, why not? Um, check out Deichkind um, with Bon Voyage. All right. Um, we're here, we're back, Funk It Pod every week, and we talk about all things. MMA, wrestling, I didn't even write this in my notes, wrestling, obviously, um, life in Thailand, academics, the media, and so on. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. And before we start with, um, as always, we start with the UFC, then we go wrestling and so on. Um, before we start with this, so because um, I, I always get the question, and I appreciate it, of course, um, I feel like I answered like every other week though. I'm um, like, how is, how is life in Thailand and things and more in Thailand in a second. But um, just to answer the question with the mask that everybody is asking. So the mask mandate is gone um, outside. So outside you are allowed to walk around without a mask. 80% of the people are still wearing masks outside. Um, no judgment. Just like how everybody going to do what they're going to do, what, how they, what, what they feel best, of course. Um, just so that I answer the question right off the bat, more on Thailand and what's happening and how life is in Thailand in just a second. Also, last week I said that I'm on dating apps again and I got lots of weird, weird, weird know, tips, advice. Um, I didn't, I didn't mean to like ask for how to get laid or anything like that. Thank you very much. I mean. Look at me, I'm in shape. I train every day. Please, come on. Um, I was just asking for for um, like experiences. like if I, like if Because I feel it's just really weird. I'm tired of like, hey, how are you doing? Uh, um, so that was just my, my, my take on that last time. So I appreciate all the, the tips and tricks. <laughs> um, how to style your profiles and pick up lines and whatnot. Um, some are really funny. Maybe I should share some. But... Um, I didn't mean it like that. I just meant like I'm I'm tired of this, this getting to know, like swiping around and then like, hey, cool profile. What are you up to? Oh, that's so cool. What are you? Oh, yeah. I think it doesn't even matter if it's like online or if it's if it's like offline somewhere. It's just like this getting to know. And then I think maybe the, the older you get, the less the less you're into that. Like, oh, God, I met so many people in my life and 83% of them are people I don't want to spend time with. Uh, so maybe you're just tired of, of getting to know new people. Maybe that's, that's just maybe it's just me as an introvert um, talking to a microphone while saying that. Uh, so yeah. But I appreciate I appreciate the the, the, the tips and tricks though. I, uh, I learned I read a lot. I'm not sure if I learned a lot, but I, I did read a lot. Um okay uh, enough of the personal stuff. Let's jump into an exciting week that 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 we had of course and let's start with MMA and this always you know I'm not just breaking down the fights because there are five billion channels out there that do that. Um, I'm gonna talk about like the stories that come out of the events and how I think the fighters and the media, sh the fighters should have used the media and the media should have, should have maybe or what the media could have done. And before I talk about the fighters, the one thing that really annoyed me, and of course you can say yeah, you don't have to watch it. Um, true, when I stopped watching it was um, the morning combat guys. They did like some some live session or whatever out of a beer house as a German, I'm already like a beer house, please. Um, I don't even drink beer, by the way. Uh, but Luke Thomas was wasted AF and it was so annoying. I think I switched off after 20 minutes. And uh, Rashad Evans was there who I felt really sorry for because I like his takes. I like to see him on, uh, I like to listen to him, to his takes. But Luke Thomas was so annoying, it's ridiculous. Um, just like interrupting and like with his drunk remarks all the time. It was one of the worst things, the worst 20 minutes of MMA reporting I've seen. Well, not even Brian. Brian Campbell tried to save it somehow, but wasn't able to do it. That was just ridiculous. Um, And then I, after the fight, of course, they did like their breakdown again. Um, usually I do enjoy Luke Thomas like getting into detail and nitty gritty. But maybe it's because of 
that live episode, I, I, I really wasn't looking forward to it. I mean, I tuned in because that's what I usually do because usually the breakdowns are great. Uh, and then he's like all the vaping on, on the camera. It's like, I mean, I don't hate on people vaping, smoking, do whatever, but why do it on camera? Um, so Luke Thomas, not that he would care, um, but Luke Thomas lost some some street cred with me this over the past two or three days. Just to let you know, Luke Thomas, yeah, you lost some credibility here. Less, less cred with me now. Um, Brian Campbell, you still got some cred. Um, but that, that was still just not great. That was just not great. Um, yeah. Anyways, enough of that. Let's talk about the fights and let's talk about how the fighters didn't, didn't really use the media and, and so on. By the way, Aaron Bronstetter was actually almost not, no, had the, more or less the better takes on the fights, I think, in my opinion, but that's just me um, agreeing with him more. Anyways, the fights, right? So, of course, yeah, boring main event. Say what you want. Izzy did what he had to do. Um, and I did, I don't think it was as boring as the Yoro Romero fight, for example. Um, yeah, Bisping said he should entertain the 20,000 people. No, yeah, really? Um Maybe County should have gone for it, right? Uh, just saying. Um, but we're not here to discuss this. Like, he did what he had to do. Uh, afterwards, he called out Pereira right away, which is fine. Sets up the next fight. Um, plays into what the UFC planned to do, what we all know would happen. Good job. Well done. Uh, then in the press conference, he talked about with his nails, which he says like others are insecure if they talk about his stuff, but he brings it up all the time. So is he uh, stop bringing it up all the time? Then we're not going to talk about it. Um, then he got back in, no, he got into it, not back and forth, but he got into it with like John Jones again, because John Jones posts on Twitter. And oh my God, there's so many John Jones fans still out there like especially on, on instagram i saw lots of support on mma fighting ig surprising like the easy hate is real right now surprising um because i mean while his fights are boring john jones fights have been boring too the last few fights that he had and and izzy didn't hit a pregnant woman didn't do cocaine that's that we know of and, and so on so huh Anyways, uh, Adesanya, of course, is great at using the media, great at press conferences, knows what to say. Uh, don't need to talk much about him there. Well done, all good. Next up, Pereira. I like Din, Th Din Thomas saying, like, if I were Adesanya, I would train tonight right after the fight for uh, Pereira. Let's let's hope he does that. Um, Jared Cannonier, pretty quiet. At least I haven't seen anything afterwards, um, but he's probably just mad at himself um for having wasted that opportunity which is understandable um take some time recover figure out what's next makes sense um i mean he's still in there like he, he's gotta fight like another big name so that um i know he stays in that he stays in, in the loop in the maybe he should call out Pereira. maybe he should be like dude you're not fighting the, the champ right now you you, you just beat one ranked fighter, I'm still in front of you, fight me. That would maybe, of course, you think wouldn't want it, but it would at least keep his name uh, in, in the discussion, I think. Then in the co-main, we had Volk destroying Max. Unfortunately, I was looking for the cupcakes, but Max obviously, Max looked terrible. In all of his media appearances all through the week, he looked he looked terrible. He looked like a ghost to me. Um, I wasn't. I wasn't surprised. Like when I saw him on the, on the Wayne show, I, it, he looked terrible, terrible, terrible. It must have been a, a difficult weight cut for him, or or, any, or something like that. Crazy. Um, then his his approach, of course, his stance, like all squared up, no more bounces. Not like in the the second fight, so terrible. Um, yeah, Volk, but Volk, of course, different level. Congratulations, Alex Volkanovski. Then, um, of course, media wise, Volkanovski calls out the 155 division respectfully so respectfully charles Oliveira, i would like to fight you um why not only thing why not is of course that there are so many contenders at 155 they're all going to be mad at him um but other than that yeah why not i mean what else does he have to prove he dispatched of everybody in 145 uh there needs to be a new contender first so 
smart use of the media. I think Volkanovski really coming into his own. Also on the way in, in show, he was then plucking his YouTube channel, cooking with Volk. Um, smart, great idea. He's, he's becoming a bit more, more, more fun, more loose, or maybe we are warming up to his character more. So maybe it's hanging out with Izzy more. Um, so Volkanovski getting there, using the media quite wisely. I appreciate it. Good job, um, Alex. Max, of course, as a loser, always hard to do something. He had he went on Twitter, I think, where he said like he's still up to two zero with knockdown. So actually, there's a good reason to have a fourth fight. And then he said just playing. So he was just joking. So good on Max for being in high spirits after being like demolished like this on a fight. And he said congrats to uh, the the champ. He's the pound for pound king right now. So congratulations there. So all sportsmanship by Max. Con congratulations. Um, so for taking it like this, well done. Um, yeah, he's of course also probably gonna figure out like what to do next, taking some time off, taking a break. And then, I mean, he's never one to really call out people via the media. He's never really using social media much. Um, but maybe now it's the time. Now it's the time to, to then, after discussing with the team, what's the next steps, two or three months, then coming out again, being like, okay, I know what I wanna do, let's go. Um, yeah, but of course, for now, as a loser, you don't have to you don't have to do much there. Um, I mean, talk, when we look at like then Sean Strickland versus uh, Alex Pereira, of course, Alex Pereira to the I want the champ, and that's about it. Uh, he's like, I knocked him out with the big pillow glass. What do you think I can do with the small glass? Um, but then that's it. We haven't heard m much more from him. But he did like interviews with everybody, and he seemed very nice with everybody. He did even did an interview with the schmo. So um, he seemed very actually kind of nice during the interviews. Um, yeah. As for the fight, I don't break down the fights, but <laughs> Sean Strickland, what what were you doing? I mean, walking. It's like my. And I, I only have, I have, am, I only do amateur, a, amateur Muay Thai fights. But my coach, if I would walk forward like this, my coach would like make me do, I don't know, some punishment push ups or whatever in between, or would just, would just, I don't know, yell at me. So why, why, Sean, why, why, why? <laughs> but to me, like the whole week, Sean Strickland looked like someone who knew he was going to lose. I'm not saying it was fixed. But he he knew he looked like someone who knew that he's just gonna go in there and that's it. That was just the feeling that I had all week long when I saw him in the media. Um, I was still waiting for for him to come out and say something. Um, but now, of course, he's gonna he has to shut up now, or he's gonna pick a fight with. You no, know, Hamza called out uh, Pereira, so maybe Sean can be like, hey. You're not fighting him. You're fighting me. Maybe it's also something that that, that Sean Strickland could do there um, to to get the hype back. Uh, I think. Other than that, um, the event was was fine. Um, what's really annoying is if you pay for the pay per view, you still get so much advertisement. Uh, ridiculous. Um, it was it was quite annoying. Um, the Alessandra walkout was nice. The Undertaker theme and so on. It was pretty cool. So I uh, appreciate that, of course. But other than that. Um, International Fight Week, I think they they produce lots of content, but it's all like more, more of the same. So as someone who's not there, not live, um, didn't feel that special to me. <coughs> still good fights though. <coughs> Pardon me, still nice fights. So who am I to complain? But it didn't feel like super special. Well, let me know if you, if you were there, if you're in the States and if it's feels more special there. Um, yeah, the last thing I want to mention, of course, is uh, Cowboy Cerrone retiring. Oh, it was sad, but at least they gave him the space. They gave him like the chance to put down the glass and then to have a, have a quick word with Joe Rogan. Um, so all good. So thank you, Cowboy Cerrone, for all the memories. Um, one of the first fighters that I watched when I got into watching the UFC and so on. Like, He's always been there. We need a fighter, cowboy, come in. Yes, of course. So, Cowboy Cerrone, uh, congratulations on a great career, and best of luck with becoming that, that movie superstar. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing to seeing Cerrone in more more movies, especially after hearing Gina Carano talking about how awesome of an actor he is. So, uh, looking forward to that. Okay, enough of the UFC stuff. 
because um, that's about it, right? I, I, no big callouts, no, no, nothing surprising at least. No Conor McGregor, no nothing. Oh, we had we had Porian and Chandler getting added. Uh, Gilbert Burns filmed it. <laughs> Great. Um, yeah, that was cool. Um, and not cool, but it was like a, a, a media moment that sets up a feud, maybe. Other than that, a bit lame in terms of like official announcement. No John Jones official announcement, no nothing. So a uh, bit weak there. Not as weak <laughs> as all the other MMA promotions out there. PFL had an event. <laughs> did you know? No, you didn't. Of course you did. Well, Friday evening, uh, I believe. Kayla Harrison, like the best female fighter on the planet. No one knew about it. So PFL. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> but lucky for, lucky for PFL, there's one promotion that's even worse in promoting things, which is Bellator. You watched the last Bellator event? No, of course not. <laughs> I'm not even gonna review anything. This is, guys, you need to get you need to get your act together. Like, seriously, you see what what UFC is doing? It's not that difficult. I mean, of course, you don't have as much money as the UFC and not the 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 TV contract and so on. But at least try. Like, there's no highlight, no em- embedded style stuff from Bellator or PFL or anything. Like, why not? Especially like PFL, the, the 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 league, and now the playoffs. Um, but why not have some background stories and stuff like this? Like, there's nothing. It's so annoying. Like, if you need someone to help you with marketing and storytelling, let me know. I teach those things. <laughs> so please. Ah, it's really annoying. It's really, 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 really annoys me. Okay, I adding some. Uh, notes here as you can hear and yes i lost my my apple pen it must be somewhere but i couldn't find it blame my cats um so no taking not as cool anymore a- anyways um let's move on from the mma uh to the wrestling the wrestling and actually a nice mix there because the wrestling was at the mma uh, we saw like the wwe brass And we are back after my cat broke down. Yeah, uh, after my cat killed killed the recording equipment for a second. Don't do it again, Spooky. She's sitting behind the curtain that I put up here to like take out the echo a little bit. How dare you? Okay, so back to the wrestling. The wrestling. Um uh so yeah the wrestling was at the mma so we had triple h we had staff we had wins and we had pat mcafee with a neck brace in 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 the stands at the ufc which was pretty cool pat mcafee wearing a neck brace because at money in the bank he got attacked by baron corbin and so he played it up so nice heads up to uh heads off to pat mcafee uh for for keeping kayfabe kayfabe alive nice um, and speaking of which, Money in the Bank, WWE Money in the Bank, again, not necessarily reviewing everything because, well, other channels do that, do, do that uh, too. Um, by the cultaholic, guys, um, you're losing a bit of steam. Like I used to always, like, first thing, like, after the event, like, what happened at? Yeah, let's check it out. But right now, like, like they sound, you, they, you guys, you cultaholic guys, I know you watch or you listen to my podcast, you cultaholic guys, you sound a little bit demotivated like jack's the worst not not the worst like not the worst but jack jack the chopper just sounds 
very often in a video like very like eh, eh, eh. so where's the energy where's the energy i know not everybody can be like like tom but a little bit more energy um so the wrestling okay cool so uh again not breaking down all the all, all, all the matches um trying to look at like what they could do with like storytelling and so on right so um live morgan wins money in the bank for the women's money in the bank and then later on cashes in on ronda rousey uh and our women's champion congratulations live morgan you only live once and so on um okay so here missed opportunity in my opinion to have rousey turn heel rousey said she likes to be heel anyway so why not turn a heel there hmm. that was a missed opportunity maybe that, that that happens later down the road later on this week or so but um i would have had her turn heel right away because it's just so nice to hate her um and this would be then a, a, a great a great first feud again for for Liv morgan of course um then what else do we have uh, i'm hesitating because i just saw that my ipad broke when my cat kicked it down You're gonna pay for this, spooky. Uh, so, sorry. Back to the wrestling. Um, then, of course, Bobby Lashley winning the the U.S. Championship from Theory. Stupid name. Austin Theory. Decent name. Theory. Stupid name. Uh, anyways, back to everything. Um, I don't care. Bobby Lashley is cool. Yeah, blah, blah. Same, same three moves of Doom, just like John Cena. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Um, theory then winning the money in the bank. Uh, I don't follow WWE enough right now to be pissed from just like tuning in once in a while. And following the storylines a little bit, I'm like, oh yeah, sure, that makes sense. He's the chosen one. Of course, they're gonna try to like, like force it down your throats. So understand that. Makes sense. Super annoying, but that's his role. So all good. Um, who's he gonna cash in on? Is the question. We will see. Probably not Roman Reigns. So. Um, then you can make your can have your your pick. Is oh, is it gonna be like a Seth Rollins thing? Is that gonna be the only way to get a title of Roman Reigns? SummerSlam. Um. Yeah. Oh, I'm still looking at my broken iPad. Um. <laughs> don't get a cat. Or oh, two cats for that matter um overall oh yeah the, the 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 tag team match was of course pretty cool um but disappointed nothing happened like the titles didn't change hands and the street profits didn't break up so but yeah the shoulder wasn't pinned so then they're gonna have a rematch probably building up to SummerSlam. maybe then we have the title change at SummerSlam, or then the breakup uh at SummerSlam. so that's that's gonna be interesting they're gonna play this up more and and in the media like on their socials and so on which is fine okay um as for aw blood and guts blood and guts was in, in, insane obviously insane 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 like i i enjoyed it a lot i have to admit i enjoyed it a lot i'm not necessarily one who says you have to bleed to make things awesome but it's called blood and guts <laughs> and it was pretty cool like the storytelling behind it was was great like how they they matched each other up in the ring was great. Um, Jericho, of course, and in the end with like trying to being smart and outside -like everybody, great. Um, John Moxley with the craziness, great. Claudio, Claudio Castagnoli with running wild, great. Uh, the, the finish on top of the cell, great. Eddie Kingston being disappointed that he didn't get the tap. Great. Great storytelling all along. And also like the uh, the, the, the Jericho Appreciation Society, of course, like everybody played their role to perfection. 
um, hanging outside of of the cage like insane. Um, it was it was a great story, uh, or a good no, a great story well told. That's how I wanted to say it. So that was fun. That was fantastic. Good job. Loved it. Perfect. Like seriously, it was that's what that's if it's called blood and guts, that's how blood and guts should be. I don't need this every week, but if it's called blood and guts, then this is how blood and guts should be. Mm -hmm. That's my takeaway from this. And you can build so many stories, of course. Like, are Eddie Kingston and Claudio not going to get along because they were shaking hands? But then, of course, Eddie Kingston is mad at Claudio for taking the tap away from him, so to speak. What's going to happen when CM Punk comes back with the interim championship, of course? Uh, all those things. So there's so many stories that that uh, that you can tell now, which is fantastic. And that's how it's supposed to be. By the way, Tony and JR also were at the UFC, I believe. So UFC brings everybody together. Nice. Uh, okay. What's next on my on my list before my cats destroy everything again? Uh, what else? We have? Oh yeah, we have. Um, which 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 topic do we go first now? I still have the media left, Thailand, cats, and academics. Um, well, since I'm complaining or blaming my cats the whole time, now they're both sleeping behind the camera. Um, so uh, if you're just listening, so um, they're sleeping also behind the microphone. <laughs> One of them, I see her like in the back uh, on, on, on my work desk next to the window because she likes to, uh, the window is always open, so she likes to, like here the outside and the other one is now behind the curtain that I that I put up here to take out the echo a little bit on the floor. That's the one that's the one that broke down everything by jumping against the curtain and then crashing my camera and my iPad and my microphone and everything. And now she's all cute there, all tired on on the floor, stretching. <laughs> yeah, spooky. I'm talking about you. Uh, so what 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 happened this week with my cats? Well a few things actually, nothing crazy, um, so don't worry. But I just share like a few few cat moments, right? Hashtag cat parents, hashtag cat dad, cat life, and so on. Uh, follow at Spooky Snooze on Instagram at Spooky S P O O K I Snooze S N O O Z E together Spooky Snooze because that's the name of both of the cats. Um, so I've got new neighbors. For a while, I was I'm living on the third floor here in my apartment building, and for a while I had, didn't have any neighbors. Everyone, everyone moved out because of me, maybe. Uh, so then I just opened the front door, and then Snooze would just I put on the leash on her, and she would just run down. Uh, and then after like ten minutes or so, I would follow her downstairs and would pick her up and would just see what she's doing, just to make sure she doesn't get lost or stuck or whatever. Uh, and Spooky would just always stay on the, she would run outside, out of the door, but would always stay on the third floor and just chill there on the cold, the cold stone floor, basically outside of the apartment. Now with the new neighbors that, who also have a dog, it's a bit more complicated, of course. And also new people move, moved in downstairs, so it's now just more crowded. So now the cats, of course, aren't as happy anymore. Um, but therefore now I let them play more on the balcony, uh, which I made which I cat proof, as I mentioned, like a few episodes ago, um, which now really works quite well, which is nice. But um, also after a while, one of them, not always the same one, but one of them always gets bored after like 10 minutes or so and then walks to the to the apartment door and like scratches the door like, I want to go out. Uh, and then now I just don't let them run out alone anymore. Uh, now I always have to go with them because of the new neighbors. They don't know them yet and so on. So just in case something's going to happen, I'm now just always with them again and don't let them run around alone as much anymore. That's it. And then um, I talked about the food last time, I believe, already, the the, the, the Vitacraft food. Still no sponsorship from Vitacraft. Hey, Vitacraft, um, we were with them sponsorship here for the für den best podcast uh, aus Bangkok. Auf, auf Englisch und auf Deutsch, ich kann, kann, kann den Podcast auch auf Deutsch machen, um, für eine VitaCraft uh, Sponsorship. Uh, I just told VitaCraft that I can also do it in German because it's a German company and my cats like their food like a lot. They, they really like the VitaCraft food a lot. I buy like those, those snacks, like, like small crunchy snacks and they have like some bars, some energy bars <laughs> and both things, as soon as I open them and they, they get, they, they, they smell 
the the food they they, they come running because uh, they like it just so much. So um, Vitacraft, I'm uh, open for sponsorships. Not a sponsorship yet, so don't flag me YouTube and Spotify and whatnot. Um, yeah. I'm also, I might have to move soon. And so if you, if you know any nice places uh, in, in Bangkok that are, that are pet friendly, let me know. Um, and the, the one thing that I'm really concerned about is like, will my cats be okay there? Um, so it needs to be some kind of spacious place, obviously. And I want to have some kind of garden space so that they, they can just run around, which is really hard to find in a city like Bangkok, which is like super uh, you know, con concrete jungle where dreams are made of. Um, so it's really hard to find the right place. I'm really worried that the, the cats the cats will suffer when I move out here. And because this is a really big, big place here, just too big right now and uh yeah so really really just thinking about the cats and looking for for a new place so if you know a, a nice place in Bangkok that is pet friendly um that's spacious and has maybe a garden or something let me know okay that's enough for uh, cat content though so, um on some recording this monday morning here in bangkok so on wednesday i have a cat date plan with uh, my girls my cats and myself so we're gonna go to i'm gonna take them to to an open air mall um gonna go to a pet friendly restaurant there where they can sit outside where we're gonna i'm gonna eat and they can watch me i have food for them as well and we go to to a pet store where they can just run around and then i just get them something because i just feel bad for them just always being at home call me crazy cat dad or whatever but i just feel like sometimes we have to do such such things so that they also see different things and that they're also excited about different things yesterday for example we went out for like in the evening I, I, we went out in the morning a little bit but in the evening we went out for like 90 minutes or so just running around in, in, in the grass in the garden chasing things and stuff and when we came back up they both fell asleep right away. Um, I even like on just just eat, eating a little bit, and they fell asleep on 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 the table. Uh, I had to carry them into like into the bedroom later on. Yes, I have them in the bedroom. They they wake up and they go out. Um, but otherwise, if I don't let them take them in the bedroom and I go to the bedroom and I close my door, they're gonna scratch on the door like let me in. So I just take them in the bedroom, and then in the morning they they go out usually um but i was so tired i didn't even think about it they just they just collapsed because they, they were just running around so much which is kind of nice just like with with children children i right, let them play and then when you go home they're gonna be tired uh so that worked very well okay so that's the cat part then the thailand part yes yeah, so I, I mentioned in the beginning already uh the mask mandate that's what i mentioned um then the Thailand pass, you don't need a Thailand pass anymore if you want to come to Thailand. So now it's much easier to, to come into Thailand, <laughs> to get into Thailand. Um, what else? Yeah, I think night establishments are longer open again. Um, weed is still legal for medical purposes, but please do double check that. Um, how to purchase it and so so I, I, I have no clue about it, didn't do it, don't know. I just see the posts every day on social media. Um, what else? Uh, I was about to say something, but now I forgot. Oh yeah, um, tomorrow I'm gonna get a uh, another tattoo somewhere on my body. Um, so I'm gonna then talk about this afterwards. Like I on my website mytai.org, I to type in tattoos. I have a list of my favorite tattoo artists in Bangkok. I will go to the number one artist that's on the list tomorrow. Um, but do check it out if you're looking for tattoos in Thailand or in, in Bangkok for that matter. And also, as I mentioned last week, my sister's going to come soon in August. So we're going to have to plan a trip. Um, didn't get to talk last week with her. So we'll try to talk with her this week. And then in the next podcast, I'm going to talk about the trip that we're going to, that we're planning and maybe then I get some feedback from you or maybe give you some ideas of like where to go, what to do and so on. Spoiler already, she's gonna, and I'm not gonna do it, but she's gonna go on like a, a, a detox to kind of thing for a week or so, I believe. Um, I, I'll, I'll be working so I can't join her. Otherwise, I also wouldn't do it, but she's gonna do like some, some detox thing in some monastery or something, I believe. But uh, more on this, once we planned everything, then I can let you know what exactly this is going to be like. 
Okay, um, it's a very short Thailand corner today. And simply because we haven't planned much, so next week we will have planned more. And then I'll go into more detail about this. If you have any questions about Thailand, though, um, please do shout out, let me know. Because I'm always happy to answer it. I'm also planning to do a few more media videos, again, explaining like the inner workings of the media, why things are happening in the media and so on. Um, I just watched by chance. I was bored last night. I was cleaning the dishes, doing the dishes. And then I saw the, the, that uh, John Stewart got the Mark Twain Prize for humor or something, right? And then I think Dave Chappelle, amongst many others, gave like a quick speech um, congratulating John Stewart and Dave Chappelle mentioned Noam Chomsky, like how the media, the Chomsky mentioned like how the media fabricates consent, which I found very interesting, which is one of the very interesting concept that, that, that Chomsky explains. And then I realized, huh, that's a good point. And not many people know about like all those theories. So maybe I should, I did it, I did it for a while last year. Maybe I will start again, um, just create a few episodes, videos slash also podcasts where you talk about media theories. Maybe that's something that, that, that people are into. Like for example, what Chomsky explains, like fabricating consent, like just manufacturing or producing content that makes you go, Oh, hmm, yeah. And then you're just accepting it without actually really thinking about it. And so you're fabricating, fabricating content by also just showing you different angles of, or certain angles of certain things that you will agree with without showing you then the rest, for example, is also part of framing, of course, and agenda setting and so on. So maybe we will just um, have a few videos on this as we move on. Um, just to talk about one thing that is just very, Important to me, but also it's, it's once you know it's obvious, right? But I just mentioned the, the, a buzzword which is called agenda setting. And then with my students and so on, we talk about this all the time. Everybody's aware of it, of course, but you just have to sometimes think about it. Like everybody who creates content has an agenda. There's nobody that creates content who doesn't have an agenda. Now, it, may, it depends on, or it, it, it really comes down to what's the agenda? Is the agenda to inform you and then by informing you, hoping that I'll give you enough content, enough food for thought that you will like my channel and that you will follow me and so that I can monetize from that. That's, that will be my agenda, for example. But then, of course, there are others that have different agendas. The agenda will be convincing you about one thing of or convincing you of one thing convincing you that republicans are great democrats are terrible or the other way around that's also agenda setting right so everybody who produces content who publishes content has an agenda now it's up to the audience the viewer the consumer to understand what is the agenda why are they doing what they are doing so every time you consume something, that's the one question you should ask yourself. Why are they doing what they're doing? And that's, it doesn't really matter who is producing the content. You should always ask the question. For, for me, for example, I love Jon Stewart. I think Jon Stewart at the Daily Show was hilarious, fantastic. I loved the old Daily Show with Jon Stewart. It was great. But they had an agenda. Now, the, the current Jon Stewart program on Apple TV the problem, I think it's called with John Stewart, I hate it because the agenda is just so obvious. I still think John Stewart is funny, smart, hilarious. That show I don't like just because it's so obvious what they're doing with their agenda, what their agenda is. And so you always have to think, what's their agenda? That goes for everybody. Colbert, if, if you're into that, but also for, on the other side of the spectrum, right? I, I don't know many of the other, like Tucker Carlson, whatever. Everybody has an agenda. Now it's down to you to decide or to understand what's the agenda. Do you agree with the agenda or disagree with the agenda? That's great too. Yeah, but be aware and say, okay, I know what they're doing, but maybe they still got some points. It doesn't mean you have to dismiss everything. Like for example, the problem with John Stewart, not a big fan right now because I think it's a very obvious agenda that they have. However, they still have interesting discussions on there. So I'm still willing to listen, 
and see, oh, okay, what can I take away from this? I just don't blindly follow everything they say. Okay. So that's something that I think is very important. So critical thinking, think, see that as an agenda, see that even people that you like, like me, I think John Stewart is fantastic. Even people that you like, they have an agenda when they produce and publish content. So be aware of that. If you are aware of that, then you can agree, you can disagree, you can make up your own mind. And that's eventually what everybody should be doing. Okay, that's that. Last thing then for today is um, the academic corner. Right now, we're in a semester break. Well, so the students are on holidays. As a semester break, we still have to work. And actually working more than, not more than during the semester, but doing more paperwork than during the semester. So it's ridiculous. First, I have like 15 students who write their, their thesis right now. So they need feedback every day, every other day. Um, so I was like, hey, can you please tell me about chapter one, two, three, or whatever? Um, so that's a lot of work all the time with 15 students or so 15 thesis, 15 times, 60, 70, 80, 90 pages. <clears throat> you don't need to write 100 pages to get an A, by the way. Quality over quantity, just saying. So that's one thing. Then end of semester also means work evaluation that you have to fill out. You have to get like lots of documents that you don't have to present um do research um give research updates for funding for example apply for funding apply for conferences write academic pa papers do research for those academic papers um, plan the new semester do collaborations with universities abroad um have meetings plan uh, i have a meeting i have meetings like every day and so it's not like we're just chilling now that you students don't have class, it's actually way more stressful in terms of preparing things than while there are classes. When there are classes, that's the fun part. You go into class like, hey, I prepared something. Right now I'm preparing. Let's go into class. Let's do it. It's the, it's the fun part. Yeah, that, that in-between work is the exhausting part that, of course, no one else sees. I'm not complaining. I'm just giving you some insights. I also restructured both of my classes I'm going to have this coming semester. I have more than two classes, but two classes that I run all by myself. The others I run with like other teachers together, other instructors, other coordinators. They're like more or less set. So I have two classes that I run completely by myself um, and I completely change them. It's more of a, of, a, of a design thinking approach now in both of those classes. So there's going to be lots of fun, but more on this as the semester approaches, I'm going to break it all down, how I planned it, what I did, in case someone is interested in that. All right, but for the students, uh, you can you can be looking forward to this, um, JM466 and JM412, more of a design thinking approach, more active learning, Ooh, uh, less just lecture. Ooh, yay, sounds like fun, I hope so. Um, that's it for today, because um, I'm scared my cat's gonna kill everything again. So thanks for joining. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe this thing, um, rate this thing, this podcast if possible on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, wherever, because this, this really helps that other people find it and then we can have broader discussions. Okay, that's it for this week. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I hope you're still staying safe, taking care, and we'll see and talk to each other rather soon. Sabadikab.